Hello Padres, welcome back. This week um, we're going to look at the stars. Um, the notes for this week is is going to be less than notes of last week. So this will be a little less work than last week, which um, I guess is a good thing. Um, please make sure you're completing the problems and the survey. I'm giving points for both the problems for the week and the survey for the week. Um, and I am using the survey to make sure, um, you know, how much work I'm giving you, if I'm giving you too much or too little, and if you have any questions and uh, are my instructions clear, I'm just using it every week just to kind of keep track of how you're doing because I'm not in the same room with you. I can't just look at you and see how you're doing. So the survey is my way of gathering information from you. So please take the time to do the survey and the problems both are worth points. All right, so uh, physics of the stars, here we go. Um, we're gonna start by defining what a solar mass is. Um, it's usually abbreviated MS. Um, sometimes it's M with this little funny symbol in it, but don't worry about that. I think that's mostly um, from last year's uh, we'll, we'll just call it ms this year and it is a star's mass compared to the sun so if we say something has a star has one solar mass it means that that star is the exact same mass as the sun so it'd be basically a, a twin of the sun be the same size same mass um, if we say a stellar object has a half solar mass, it means it would have half the mass of the sun, so it'd be half as small. And uh, if we said a, a stellar object has eight solar masses, then it would have eight times the mass of the sun. So we're using this solar mass term uh, just to kind of um, compare it to the size of the sun. And the reason we do it this way is because um, if I say that a star has a mass of um, seven times 10 to the 20 kilograms. That's a big number, but is it, how does it compare to the sun? Is it bigger than the sun? Is it smaller than the sun? It's kind of confusing. So this way, uh, by using solar masses, it's, it's very easy just to kind of, quick and easy way to see how big is this, and it gives us a reference um, on the size. All right, so a very low mass star. This is a stellar object that is half the mass of the sun. So it's a, it's a half solar mass or 0.5 solar mass. Um, the way they form, they start off as a nebula. So we said um, our first week of astronomy, we said that nebulas are uh, clouds of dust and gases. So we have this dust and gas and gravity is, um, gravity strong enough it's going to pull all that dust and mass together and that gravity is going to kind of compress it into a protostar so a protostar is kind of like a loose compression of dust and gas it's like not quite a star yet it's like it's getting into that ball but it's not um it's not a star yet it's like a baby star um so for these uh half solar mass um, the protostar collapses even further, and it forms what is known as a brown dwarf. So a brown dwarf is an object where gravity is not strong enough to fuse hydrogen into helium. So we have all those hydrogen atoms, and the pressure is not squishing them into helium. It's not strong enough to do that. And so because of that, we have no fusion. There's not that release of energy. Uh, that happens with fusion when, when you convert hydrogen to helium, uh, a lot of energy is released. Um, and so because that energy is not being released, uh, brown dwarfs do not shine. So they're not fusing hydrogen to helium. They're not shining. They're just these giant dark objects that are like suns, but they're not shining like, like stars or suns. Um, and because of this, most astronomers don't classify them as stars. Um, because they're not shining, they're not fusing um, hydrogen into helium. And in fact, if you go back and you look at my definition of what a star is, it one of the definitions was to fuse hydrogen into helium. So by that definition, um, a brown dwarf is not a star. However, uh, they're also not planets because they're way too big to be planets. 
um, you can have planets around uh, brown dwarfs. So, um, you know, they're not really planets, they're not really stars, they're kind of like this awkward in the middle phase. Um, we just call them brown dwarfs. Like I said, some people will call them stars, some people won't call them stars. Uh, like I said, they're kind of like in the middle. Um, because they don't shine, we don't have a real picture of what a brown dwarf looks like. Um, this is an artistic rendering. So it's what an artist thinks uh, a brown dwarf might look like. Okay, so if we have more mass in that nebula, so we have a nebula again, uh, this one has enough mass to actually form a real star. So we have two paths. Um, we just did very low mass. So very low mass doesn't really produce stars. It just produces brown dwarfs. But if you have a low mass, not very low, but just low, uh, you get this upward path. And so if what happens on this upward path is there's more mass in the nebula. That's the gas cloud. There's more mass than the very low mass. And so there's enough mass to actually collapse. Uh, it starts as a stellar cloud. It starts off as a protostar, goes from uh, nebula to protostar. From protostar, it ignites. There's enough mass to actually turn on the planet, not the planet, turn on the star. So the star starts fusing hydrogen into helium. That releases huge amounts of energy and we get a star like our sun. So our sun is a low mass star. So our sun right now is in this phase. It is burning. Um, it's burning. It's turning hydrogen into helium. And then what happens uh, after the hydrogen runs out, when it runs out of fuel, when it runs out of turning that hydrogen into helium, um, the star collapses. And the reason it collapses is because when the sun is in the, its current stage, uh, this stage right here, or where our sun's at right now, um, gravity's trying to pull it in and the energy from the nuclear uh, fusion is pushing out. So you have kind of like this explosion of energy pushing out and gravity pulling in, and it's kind of keeping the sun right there. But if you run out of fuel, there's still the gravity, but there's not the fuel to push out. And so gravity becomes stronger. When the gravity becomes stronger, um, it, it uh, condenses, collapses. And it collapses and collapses and collapses. And when it collapses to a low enough point, um, it gets dense enough and hot enough where it starts to fu uh, fuse helium. And so now it's converting helium um, and it can make carbon, it can make oxygen. So it starts making, it's hot enough and dense enough where it's starting to make um, higher elements on the periodic table. When that happens, it's releasing a ton of energy. Way more energy is released uh, during that phase than during the hydrogen into helium phase. And so uh, then the star becomes a red giant. So when our star runs out of hydrogen, and there's no hydrogen left to burn into helium, it collapses. It collapses until it gets dense enough and hot enough where helium can start being fused into other elements. And that produces a larger red giant. And when our sun becomes a red giant, um, it's going to expand hugely. Um, Mercury, Venus, Earth will all be inside the sun. The sun is going to swell to a huge size, big enough to encompass the Earth. Um, this is going to be um, millions of years from now. We don't have anything to worry about um, around then. But um, that's a red giant. And then what happens is it gets so large that eventually uh, the gravity can't hold the outer atmosphere of the star and it just kind of drifts away. And that's kind of what's happening here with the planetary nebula is it just kind of drifts away and um, it eventually runs out of uh, helium to convert. And then we just get a white dwarf, which is this. So a white dwarf is... Um, the fusion is done. It's no longer producing energy or light. And what we have is a very dense, very hot core of a star. 
And it does give off a lot of heat, but it is going to cool down, and it's eventually going to cool down until um, until it's just cold. But it, it takes a long, 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 long time to cool down that far. So, very low mass, we get brown dwarfs. Low mass, like our sun, goes along this upper route. But what if you have an even bigger nebula? If you have an even bigger nebula, you get this path. So with this path, um, you still start as a stellar cloud. It still goes into protostars. Uh, the protostar, uh, because there's enough gravity, it's making a large star. The star is much bigger than the sun. And when what, what happens is um, the same thing. When it runs out of hydrogen, it collapses. But now there's so much more gravity um, that it goes into a supergiant, which is just, it's just absolutely big. And um, when the supergiant runs out of energy, kind of the same thing happens. But now when it collapses, it actually collapses and it rebounds into a supernova. And these are violent explosions. They are very, 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 very bright. And what's left at the very core after a supernova are either a neutron star, which we'll talk about later, um, which is just very, very dense, or if it's even more massive, it can form a black hole. So let's, let's uh, go into a little detail and write some stuff down about this. So low mass is between a half a solar mass, because remember less than half is a, a brown dwarf. So this is bigger than a brown dwarf, but it's about two, 2.2 times as the size of our sun. Uh, it starts off as a nebula. The nebula collapses. It makes a protostar, uh, which is kind of a, it's like a baby star, but it's not fusing anything yet. It's not producing energy yet. Um, a main sequence star starts. So now the star is actually born. Main sequence just means it's an adult star. Uh, it's fusing hydrogen into helium. It releases a lot of energy. So this is the, the, adulthood of the star. If you think of uh, protostars as kind of like the babies, they're not quite stars yet. Main sequence is like your adult star. Um, when the star runs out of hydrogen, the star collapses, causes pressure and temperature to increase. Helium fuses into heavier elements. We mentioned that. And so then what happens is it produce, gets even hotter. It makes a, a giant, much bigger than the sun. Um, as it runs out of fuel, um, it, could, it just kind of drifts off into space, creating that planetary nebula. And what's left is the core at the middle is uh, the dead star. No fusion remains. It's no longer shining. Um, it's very hot still, and it takes a long, long, long time to cool. All right, and in that bottom path are high mass stars. And this is 2.2 to 315 times the size of the sun. So these stars are massive. And as I've mentioned, they start the same. It starts off as a nebula of the gas. The gas uh, gravity causes the gas to come together. It creates a protostar, baby star, no fusion yet. Uh, main sequence star. So it's the same thing. It's an adult star. It is bigger than um, low mass because you can see it's bigger. Uh, more massive, so it's a, it's a larger star. When it runs out, uh, it collapses. Same thing as before. Uh, it turns into a supergiant. Uh, sorry, a giant, but now it's a supergiant. It's even bigger. Uh, supergiants can create heavier elements. Um, if you recall what I just said here for low mass, uh, they produce carbon and oxygen. Um, but for high mass, uh, they can produce carbon and oxygen, but they also produce magnesium, silicon, and iron. So they're producing uh, much heavier elements. Um, and some of these are just, they're just very, very big, a thousand times as big as this, our sun. And then when they run out of fuel, they collapse, and it collapses, and it rebounds and explodes. And during that explosion, um, all other elements are made. So the explosion is so huge, um, all natural elements on the periodic table uh, are made during this collision, during this explosion. And then you either are left with a neutron star, which is a very dense core, or uh, you end up with a black hole. 
So, and that depends on the size. Because um, if you look at uh, high mass stars are 2.2 to 315, that's a pretty big window. So um, the, on the lower side, they end up as neutron stars and on the more massive side, they end up as black holes. Um, here's a video of an uh, Irish astronomer talking about uh, life cycle of stars. Um, take a look, it's a pretty good video. I wanna talk about some unique stars. Um, VY Canis Major, uh, this is one of the largest stars in our galaxy. Um, it's not just a supergiant, it is a hypergiant. Um, it's found in the constellation Canis Major, and it is three billion times bigger than the sun. This is the largest star we have found uh, in our neighborhood of the Milky Way galaxy. Huge, huge, huge star. So know that one, that's an important one. VY Canis Major is the largest one in the, Mil in the Milky Way. Uh, Sirius, this is the brightest star that we can see. Um, it's found in the constellation Canis Major. Um, it's typically, um, you, you, can, you can see it at night if, if it's clear. Um, and it's very, very bright. It looks almost like a planet. Planets are actually brighter than stars because they're, they're much closer. Um, we can see some planets uh, this time of year, um, and Sirius is also visible, and it's, it's very bright. Um, Alpha Centauri is the closest star system. Um, it's a triple star system with at least one extrasolar planet. So it's um, the closest, it's 4.3 light years away, which is still a long ways to go. There is no way we can even... Um, reach there using spaceships. It's so far away, it would take us way too long to get there. Um, and there's actually three stars. And the three stars are kind of moving around a common point, point of gravity. And there's at least one planet um, circulating one of those stars. Um, Polaris is the North Star. Um, it is in line with the Earth's axis. So if the Earth is spinning this way, uh, Polaris here. So we're spinning right underneath Polaris. And so it looks like the star does not move in the sky. Um, it is found in the constellation uh, Ursa Minor, which is the Little Dipper, and uh, used by sailors to navigate. Because um, you find that star and you always know that is towards the north. And the last one is Swift J1644 plus 57. Um, it is in the Draco constellation and it is um, a star that's actually being eaten by a black hole. Interesting fact. Who would have thought? Okay. Um, stellar objects. Uh, binary stars are two stars that are orbiting around each other. Um, most stars are binary stars. So our solar system only has the sun. It's only one star. But most Star systems have two stars. 85% of them are binary star systems. Um, you can have higher orders. So you like uh, Alpha Centauri has three stars uh, circling around. You can have multiple star systems going on, moving around. Um, a globular cluster is a group of stars forming a globe. So you can have a star is kind of in a sphere. Um, pulsars. Pulsars are neutron stars which were after supernova. And um, they are rotating neutron stars and they produce pulses of um, radiation. So um, because they're spinning, uh, they're sending out uh, waves. And if they're not spinning this way, they're actually spinning, uh, they're spinning this way. So when they, when the pole, I can't, so if this, if this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, um, most planets, you know, they're, they're spinning this way, right? But if we turn it on edge and we spin it this way, uh, there's actually radiation that comes out of both poles. It gets shot out of the North and the South Pole. So right now you're getting hit by the South Pole and you can see that bright pulse of radiation. And then as it spins around then the North Pole faces us and we see it. And so it's like bright, dark, bright, but when, it, when the poles are facing us, we get these pulses of radiation. And um, 
it's not ionizing radiation, it's not harmful radiation, but we can, uh, it's kind of like the, the, the star is like flashing at us. Um, a variable star uh, is a star whose luminosity dims and brightens. Uh, there are several stars that are variable stars and um, yeah, they just get dark and then get bright. Uh, it can happen over days or months or years. Uh, quasars. A quasar is a massive and faraway object. It emits huge radiation. Um, remember, radiation, light is also part of EM radiation, so it's just maybe very bright. Um, we think they might be black holes in the center of galaxies, releasing energy from the friction from the surrounding disk. So if you have um, a black hole and it's pulling everything in, as the stuff's on top and it's swirling around, uh, the stuff is rubbing as it's swirling, and we think that that stuff, um, it's not inside the black hole, so that stuff can still go out, and we think that might be what's causing, or the, the source of quasars, but we're, we're not sure. All right, a couple more slides to go. Uh, star spectral type. So um, it's based off of temperature. So you can see um, the hotter the star is, uh, the different color it is. So red is hot, but blue is even hotter. Um, our star is yellow, so uh, our sun is a G-type star. And then, oh, and you can see here, uh, these, this is the solar mass, so 1.1 is about the size of the sun. Um, this is how large uh, radius is, and then this is how bright it is, the luminosity. So you can see 1, 1, 1, that's our sun. Our sun is a G star. And then as you get hotter, you also have more mass, the mass is going up, uh, the radius and so the size is going up, and the brightness, the luminosity is going up. Um, so I am gonna ask you kind of some questions on these. The way to remember this, there's a mnemonic. Uh, the mnemonic is for O-B-A-F-G-K-M. The mnemonic is O, be a fine girl or guy, kiss me. So O, be a fine guy or girl, kiss me. And so if you remember that, um, you can use that. So if I say something like um, compare a M type star to a G type star, you would say M are smaller, uh, they have less mass, and they are um, less bright. And the way you remember that, oh, be a fine guy or girl, kiss me. So here's a couple of practice questions. Uh, which star is hotter, type O or type A? So if you think O, B, A, fine, so O is higher, so O would be hotter. Which star is smaller? So if we have O, B, A, fine, uh, guy or girl, kiss me, F is higher, so F is a bigger, so M would be smaller. Uh, which star is brighter, B or G? O, B, A, fine, guy or girl. So B would be brighter. And which type of star is the sun? We said the sun is type G. So we have our types, O, B, A, fine, O, B, A, F, G, M, a K, M. Uh, and then we have subtypes. So subtypes are 1A, 1B. Uh, these are supergiants. Um, two is giants. Three is uh, sorry, two is luminous giants, three is giants, four is subgiants, which is a little smaller, five is main sequence, these are uh, normal stars, six is subdwarf, and seven is white dwarf. So it's kind of like um, it's measuring the size, starting with one is the biggest, and then seven is the smallest. And the last slide. Um, so this slide is called the uh, Hertz Russell diagram and they use this uh, to classify stars. And so stars um, live their life here on the main sequence, which is this kind of curve right here. Uh, when they die, uh, they can either go, if they're, if they're up here, uh, they're gonna go this way and become giants. Uh, if they're up here, they can also go this way and become 
blue giants or super giants, if they're down here, uh, what happens is uh, they don't go this way, they're gonna come down this way. So you'll notice that the temperature, um, this side is cool, it's 3,000 degrees. Uh, this side is hot, it's 40,000, so it's kind of um, it's kind of flipped. And so um, as the stars get hotter, 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 you can see over here it's uh, brighter. And so we have our O, which is a it's hotter. Um, magnitude is also a brightness, just like luminosity is a brightness. And so um, you can kind of see the, the life cycle of a star. And um, that is it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, be sure to do both the uh, problems for the stars and the survey for this week. Both are due on Friday. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good day, Potters.